Moving on to week two, uh, the drill, this session will be mainly focusing on agility and we'll be using the plyometric agility hurdles. And before we start, we'll be performing a warm up which, will, which uh, will involve a mix of different types of stretches and also some quick sprints, and which will help to warm up the major muscle groups and also have a pulse raiser so that the heart can start sending blood around the body ready for the session. Um, when using the plyometric agility hurdles, you need to set up a series of uh, these agility hurdles with two foot increments. Um, and starting with uh, your leg shoulder width apart, you must jump upward and forward to clear each hurdle, landing on the balls of your feet. Upon landing, you must jump again immediately, driving forward with your arms. Uh, you must repeat this for uh, 10 to 12 repetitions and this should be done for three sets and in between sets there should be a rest for about a minute uh, this minute's rest allows the performer to recover and then perform their optimum level when doing it again um, the cool down for this exercise will involve some static and dynamic stretches and some light jogging to help with the removal of lactic acid and once again we'll just be trying to open out our body in order to try and increase the amount of oxygen that we are intaking. Um, on the Tuesday I've decided not to put a session in again as the client already has cricket training on Tuesday which they have previously said already involves fitness based exercises and therefore I don't want to be training them too hard as that can lead to injury. Uh, on the Wednesday I've decided to give them a rest day for the client to recover from the, pre the previous two training sessions that they've had and also so that they can make the gains and therefore be ready for the training session that I've prepared for them on the Thursday. Uh, moving on to the Thursday, this session will mainly involve fitness based exercises and will be kind of hit training mixed in with coordination. Um, first of all, warm up will take place again, which will involve static and dynamic stretches, a few quick sprints, and some light jogging in order to uh, warm up these major muscle groups that will be used during the session, which allows us to reduce the risk of injury by quite a lot, and also just to be able to get the heart sending blood around the body in order for the session to begin. Uh, the first drill uh, will be involving performing uh, one dynamic exercise of your choice which can either be burpees, uh, push-ups or sit-ups and these need to be done as quickly as possible for 30 seconds at a time and then they're allowed to rest for 10 seconds and this has to be repeated for a total of around 8 rounds. Um, this should be done for 3 sets and in between each set the client has a minute recovery time in order to try and uh, increase the amount of oxygen they're intaking into their body so that they can prepare for the next set. Uh, to avoid injury and burnout, limit these hit sessions to two or three per week. Uh, this will allow for the performer not to become overloaded with these high intense sessions and therefore we can try and reduce the risk of injury. Uh, these high intensity exercises will help the performer though as it can overall increase their performance as the sports that they play are generally quite high intensity and played at a fast pace and therefore they'll be able to get used to this and overall increase their performance. Uh, the second drill will involve some coordination drill, uh, drills. Now for this, beginner clients can either keep both feet on the floor or intermediate clients can balance on one leg uh, with the opposite leg lifted at 90 degrees or high as possible um, uh, with at the hip and then, or the knee. Now what the player will have to do is they'll either use a tennis ball or possibly a soft uh, medicine ball. Now the coach will cue the client to toss the ball into each hand um, simultaneously. So they'll have two balls in um, both hands and they'll be balancing on one leg and they'll, both, they'll throw both balls up at the same time and they try and have to try and catch them simultaneously as well. Now by doing this, this increases the performer's uh, coordination as the eyes should be following the ball. Uh, and also, uh, by increasing their coordination levels, this will help them in sports such as cricket as you have to have a high level of coordination when batting, bowling and also fielding as you have to be able to keep your eyes on the ball uh, in order to make sure that you either catch the ball or hit the ball as far as you can and to make sure that you don't uh, mess up.
when performing this drill, um, it should be completed three sets on each leg of balancing. Um, and it's, it is also a good drill as it's specific to cricketer's skill, and therefore uh, it's sort of like a game scenario and can make the cl client more interested in taking part. Uh, the cool down for this session will involve some light stretching and jogging to prevent the build up of lactic acid and once again just trying to open up the body in order to increase the total amount of oxygen intake and therefore we, we are able to try and prevent uh, the delayed onset of muscle soreness the next day. Uh, on the Friday I've decided to give the performer another rest day due to the quite high intense session that we had previously. And this also also allows them to recover and make the gains, uh, prepare it, and also preparing for the cricket game they have the next day. Uh, due to the client having quite high intensity sessions this week, and also having their own training sessions, which were fitness based, and having the cricket game, I've decided to give the client an extra rest day this week, uh, so that they are ready for the next training sessions that'll be coming, which are quite tough, and it also allows the, the performer to make these gains. And also, also recover from the previous sessions that we've had. Moving on to week three, um, the first drill, uh, the first session is mainly focused on agility and power. Um, both agility and power are key in cricket, as the performer needs agility when fielding and power for when batting. Uh, we'll be trying to improve upon the client's power, power and agility by using plyometric box drills, which are a great way to build explosive power and also try to increase foot speed. A plyometric box is a padded or unpadded cube that ranges anywhere from 14 to 36 inches in height. Uh, before the session takes place, we'll be just doing some light, uh, some light dynamic stretching such as um, lunges, uh, squats in order to warm up these major muscle groups in the legs such as the, the quadriceps and hamstrings as they'll be predominantly used throughout the session and we want to try and reduce the risk of injury. Um, so the first drill that we're performing with the plyometric boxes is step ups. Uh, now what the client wants to do is they want to start by standing in front of the box and they want to step up onto the box with one leg and then bring the other leg up as and also so that both legs are on top of the box and once you get both legs up there you want to have them completely straight before stepping that down back down at one feet at a time. Um, this should be these should be done for around uh, 40 reps of three sets. They'll be stepping on and off of the box 40 times which will be one set and they'll have to do this three times and they'll have a minute and a half break in between each set in order to prepare for the next set that they have. Um, next we'll be moving on, the next drill with the five metric box drills is lateral step overs. Now what they want to do is they want to start by standing to one side of the box and they need to step laterally or sideways onto the box with one leg and then bring the other leg up so that they are standing on top of the box. They, want, they then want to step down with one leg onto the opposite side of the box and then bring the other leg down as well. They also want to do this 40 times in order to complete one set and should be completed for three sets and yet again have a recovery time of a minute and a half in between each set. The final drill using the plyometric boxes is box jumps. This is the most commonly known uh, drill which plyometric boxes are used for. Now this will just stand, start with the client standing in front of the box and then using two feet to explode off of the ground on, and jump on to the top of the box landing with both feet. There are some safety precautions that need to be taken place before this such as there needs to be a uh, mat placed down in case the client does fall which can then lead to serious injury if the necessary precautions aren't taking place. Once they have jumped onto the top of the box, so they want to jump back down from the box and then try and immediately jump back up. This needs to be done for three sets and three sets will consist of around 12 reps. Uh, by doing this, this allows the performer to increase their agility by using quick movements when jumping on and off the box, but also increasing their 
power as they're having to use um, all of the muscles in their legs in order to explode off the ground and jump onto the top of the box. Moving on to the next day, uh, the client has cricket training, which is why I've decided not to put a session in as we don't to overload the client. Uh, previously, on the previous session before the client's cricket training, a, wall, a cool down must be completed in order to try and prevent the performer uh, from becoming injured. And this can be um, ranging from an ice bath, anything to just making sure that you get enough oxygen intake into the body in order to make sure that the muscles aren't fatiguing. Uh, I've decided to give the client another rest day on the Wednesday so that they can recover from the previous two training sessions that we've had and that they are ready for the, the training session that we have the next day. Um, on the Thursday, this training will involve a mix of fitness and agility. Uh, and the first will be focusing on agility, which is a very key aspect in cricket as it is a main component of fielding. Uh, once again, we'll be performing a warm up, which will involve some light jogging and some sprints, just in order to warm up the major muscle groups and also some stretching, which will help with the range of motion and therefore reduce the risk of injury occurring. Uh, the first drill will involve the use of agility ladders once again. Uh, be a drill which we have used previously where your feet are shoulder width apart and your torso just hanging over your knees and you drive through the hills to jump forward two ladder squares and upon landing you immediately jump one back. And you continue to do this until you reach the end of the ladder where there will be some coins which you have to run in and out and then sprint back to the end and uh, restart the process. This will be done for three sets of eight reps to make sure that they are getting the most benefit out of the session by really pushing the client. This should also be performed at 60 to 80 percent of the client's max heart rate, which is within their aerobic training zone. Um, however, they are still working at high intensity, so that they are getting the most benefit out of the session. Uh, the second drill in this session will be fitness based, as it is also a key aspect in cricket, as it as it will allow them to perform at their optimum level for the whole game. Uh, this will include interval training where the performer will run for two miles and then have a five minute rest and then run another two miles and have a five minute rest and then run that final mile which should be um, trying to go as quick as they uh, can however not sprinting as this can cause injury due to the muscles being fatigued. During their rest they should be trying to open up their chest in order to get as much as much oxygen as they can into the body so that they are preparing themselves for the next uh, set of running. This should be performed at 60-70% to 70 of the client's maximum heart rate and this will also help, help to increase their endurance levels which are key in cricket when running and fielding as it means you are able to work for longer and therefore increase your performance just by increasing your endurance levels. Uh, after this you have to perform uh, a cool down. Now what the cool down that I've designed is an ice bath as this allows the performer to cool down the muscles very quickly and also is key in trying to prevent the build up of lactic acid and therefore stops the performer from uh, the delayed onset of muscle soreness the next day. Uh, I've decided to give the client a rest down on the Friday as a, I'm trying to help them make their gains before their cricket game and therefore um, allows them to try and increase their performance levels during that game. Uh, I've, at the end of the week, I've tried to include an extra session which will be working on endurance and agility. Uh, so first of all, we'll be starting off with a warm-up, which will be a mix of static and dynamic stretches, and also some light jogging, just to warm up the major muscle groups in the, that we'll be using in the session. Um, this session will yet again involve a five-mile run with a five-minute break at the halfway point. Uh, so therefore we are taking out one of the five minute breaks to try and overload the client. This should take the client about 45 to 50 minutes and will help them to work on their VO2 max levels. The next year will be focusing on improving the client's agility and the way we'll be doing this is by the use of the uh, agility ladder drills once again.